Uh, hi everybody, I'm Aurélien Jarno and I'm going to present you a QMU, uh, which is something which can be very useful in the Debian development. So, first of all, what is QMU? So, QMU is an open source machine emulator and more recently a virtualizer. And you can run a virtual, a full virtual machine as a simple user on a machine. There is, that's the system mode emulation. There is also another mode, which is the user mode emulation, to run a single binary compile which for a Linux BSD Darwin uh, from one CPU to another CPU, keeping the same OS uh, but on another uh, CPU. For example, a, a RMEL binary on, on i386. So the supported system are uh, Alpha ARM, Callfire, Etrax, Microblas, MIPS, MIPSL, PowerPC, SH4, Spark, x86, x86, x64. So it represents uh, a big subset of um, the Debian supported architecture. How it can be useful in the Debian context? So uh, it can be really useful to port, uh, to do porting work on other architecture. So you can uh, install the package you want without uh, asking DSA to install a package on a portal machine. You can also uh, be root on the machine, so for some debugging you need to be root. Also the good point is that you have uh, access to different architecture without uh, having network access, so you can be on a plane or in an airport or something, uh, and still debugging uh, for example, some uh, package on ARM. It's also very useful on Debian installer or Debian live development. You don't have to burn a new CD image and try to, to test it by rebooting your machine or having a, a second machine to do it. Or to test the boot process, testing upgrade also. A kernel debugging because you with QMU you can uh, boot a kernel and uh, start a debugger very early in the kernel. and as the debug really the first part of, of the kernel and it can also be very useful for cross compiling and I'm sure you are uh, you have also plenty of idea of use cases. Uh, the performance are good compared to some of the emulators like Box for example but uh, you have to be prepared for something which is slow. Uh, so how QMU works, I, I won't uh, spend a lot of time on that, I w but just to give you a, an idea how it is done inside. So to achieve a reasonable performance, QMU uses a dynamic translation, that is uh, the instruction from uh, the CPU you want to emulate are converted, trans dynamically translated, only before uh, trying to execute them, they are converted into an internal language. Then there is a code optimization path, uh, on this language there is a register allocation and then the code uh, is translate the code uh, from the uh, machine you want to emulate it's uh, generated uh, uh, translated into the, the host code to uh, have good performance uh, as there are a lot of loops or the same code is executed a lot of time there is a translation cache so the translation is done uh, as few as possible. So the only problem is that the, the CPU context can change. So in a lot of cases, you lose the translation cache, but it helps a lot. Uh, when some parts of the code are then translated into the host code, they are uh, chained together. So you execute the first part of the code. There is a loop. You execute again the, the, the other part of the code. Uh, to be also a fast use condition code optimization, that is, uh, for example, on the x86, there is a, a flag register uh, computing the carry, uh, the zero flags for after each uh, instruction. It takes a lot of time to do that. So instead, uh, QMU just save uh, all what it needs uh, to compute this flag, but don't compute them. And if later those flags are needs, uh, they are recomputed on the fly. And in the CPU, there is also a emula emulation. Uh, so uh, the the memory management uh, is is done there, and uh, SMP support. That is, you can emulate uh, multiple uh, CPU. Uh, for example, having a machine a qu emulating a quad core machine. Uh, QMU uh, aims to be fast, 
So the goal is not to be cycle accurate. So it's not something that can be used uh, for benchmarking, for example, uh, if this part of code is faster than the other. It's really uh, the target is to be able to run as fast as possible uh, the, the virtual machine. So I said in the introduction, there are two um, main modes in QMU. Those, so one of the modes is the system emulation. It is based on the CPU emulation, but if you really want to run an OS, you need the CPU and some devices. So uh, there is uh, also a device emulation, so it emulates memory, chipset, buses, a lot of I.O. device, so, I mean keyboards, serial and prior ports, and the PC speaker. Also, you have to have storage, so it emulates disk interface, either ID or the SCSI, associated with some hard drives or DVD-ROM. And it has a lot of other devices like graphic card, uh, sound card, network interface, USB uh, emulation, uh, Bluetooth emulation. And uh, in order to be, so with all those devices and this CPU emulation, you are able to run an unmodified OS directly under QMU. Uh, it's not very fast because some uh, devices are very t em has to be emulated, so your uh, kernel in the virtual machine translate, for example, the network packet into uh, um, instruction to the network card, and QMU has to do exactly the reverse, converting them in the, in the other side. So that's why they are para-virtualized devices, which means if your guest OS uh, has a special driver, you can have a, a faster network card removing these translation uh, steps. Uh, so it's mainly useful for Linux, and even uh, if uh, you are using that uh, between for emulating an ARM machine on a x86 um, uh, computer, uh, that can improve the speed of the network or the hard drive. And the second mode uh, of QMU is the user mode. So it's only a subset of the system emulation. Uh, it mainly uses CPU emulation, uh, only part of it actually, and uh, it takes a binary, it emulates the instructions uh, of the binary, and when it, it finds a syscall instruction, or depending on the architecture, the syscall is, is different, it translates all the syscall argument to the host uh, kernel that is changing the NDNS, the structure alignment, and some specific uh, stuff. Then the syscall is executed on the host kernel, and the result is translated again. So if uh, you are running an application which is not CPU lim limited, so m m no um, uh, computation code, for example, mainly doing disk access, graphic interfa interface, and so on, uh, it can be uh, really fast. So with that, you can run, take uh, an RML binary and execute it directly on your computer uh, and test it. So it can be useful, for example, so if you have uh, an ARM CPU and you want to, uh, to run a proprietary software, it can be very useful, but also to do cross-compiling uh, 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 for, for another system. So there are some helpers to QMU to make it running faster. So there is uh, the old, I will say, QMU kernel module, so it's a module run in the kernel. Uh, it only works on x86 and x64, and uh, does not need hardware support on your CPU. The way it works is instead of translating instructions, which takes time, execute uh, part of the g this code directly on your CPU uh, in ring 3, so there is theoretically no um, security issue. But to do that, there are a lot of assumptions done on the guest OS, uh, which means you have good performance, but sometimes it may crash, so it's mainly tested on Windows and Linux, but still there is some strange behavior at some point. And it's not maintained anymore, so I don't even think the module compiler on the recent kernel. The reason why it is not maintained is that uh, recently um, a lot of CPU manufacturers have introduced hardware support for the virtualization. Uh, it's done on x86, x84 with on Intel and AMD CPU. 
So, um, or a recent AMD CPU have that, but on Intel you have to make sure uh, the model you buy um, has the, vir uh, uh, the virtualization instructions because Intel wants to segment the market and disable them on some CPU. Uh, on poor PC, it's also possible on some uh, CPU, IA64 and 390 uh, QM is able to to use the uh, hardware support to the virtualization. So the, the target instruction in this mode are not translated anymore but executed directly on the CPU and the CPU take care about that. Uh, depending on the CPU you have, uh, it, also, it also can also handle some MMU support or not, either it has been done in the kernel or directly on the CPU. And with that you can achieve close to native performance. So for the history, uh, KVM, the kernel virtual machine, started as a fork from QMU, and now the code is being reintegrated into QMU. Uh, it's not the the two projects. KVM is mostly used as a development branch, and when it is stable, it is merged into QMU. But uh, it starts to be really usable now in QMU. So what uh, host and CPU? Uh, the QMU support, so it can run on GNU Linux, BSD, OpenSolaris, macOS, and Windows. And uh, it doesn't run on every host because there is this translation step, so it translates into the internal language, and then uh, to support a new CPU, you have to uh, write the code which translates the internal language into the assembly code of the, of the CPU. So it supports uh, still uh, a good subset, so x86 for PC ARM uh, are working very nicely. Uh, HPPA is very experimental, I think it's not really maintained anymore, so I haven't tried recently, I don't know if it works. Spark works uh, well for some um, architecture, but not for the other, so it's still a bit experimental. And S390X I've just mentioned in there, so it's the 64-bit version of S390. Um, it's currently only a set of patches that have been posted uh, a few days ago on the mailing list. It seems to work well, but I haven't tried, I cannot tell you. And what interests probably you more, because I guess most of you have a x86 or x64 machine, or power PC, it's w which target you can run, which virtual machine you can emulate uh, with QMU. So I will uh, run quickly uh, about all the, um, in the supported uh, architecture we also have in Debian, so you can see the state of this architecture and if you can use it for debugging or you should be prepared to something which doesn't really work. So, uh, so the x86, x86, c4 support, so 32 or 64 bit. It supports Intel or it emulates Intel or AMD CPU even with recent instruction sets, so MMX, SSE, SSE2. And it emulates a standard PC with a, a, a very old chipset but uh, still runs uh, a lot of OS with that. It has PCI, USB, graphic card support. Uh, it's if you emulate a Phenom AMD Phenom CPU, there is also a, the virtualization instruction sets supported. So and inside QMU, you can develop uh, the KVM module uh, because it is able to emulate those instructions. And and I think recently it's even you can even run a virtualized. Uh, QMU under QMU under QMU, there is nested virtualization support on AMD. Uh, in 32 bit, it can emulate up to 64 GB of RAM and a few terabytes in 64 bit mode. I think the main limit uh, in 64 bit mode is just testing. Uh, very few person have access to such machine to, to test if it works or not. So in short, it's very good emulation uh, in user mode and in system mode. There is no real problem with this target, so you can really use it. The ARM support, so it supports various CPU from ARMv4 to ARMv7, so you can ch uh, choose them. Uh, the emulation on the CPU side is very uh, good, except for the recent instruction sets. So VFP and Neon uh, are there, but they are uh, not really tested and I've seen recently on the QMU mailing list that some pure persons are trying to use a FFmpeg with them and they are uh, fixing the bugs currently, detecting and fixing the bugs. Uh, 
It supports uh, various uh, board or uh, devices, so the versatile rear view boards, the Nokia N800 810. And if you want to run it in Debian, uh, the best is to use the versatile board because we have a kernel in Debian uh, that, that is available and can run uh, onto the board. One of the main problems is that most boards are limited to 256 megabytes of RAM. So um, it was uh, still a good value until recently uh, compared, for example, to the, to the slug, which has only 32 megabytes uh, of RAM. But now there are very fast ARM devices with a lot more memory. So QMU is a bit lagging behind for that. It also supports PCI and USB uh, uh, in interface. It has an emulated graphic card uh, and no firmware support, meaning you have to run the kernel and the initially directly. And the good emulation user mode. So it's compare, for example, to a slug device. If you have a, a two gigahertz machine, uh, QMU will be faster than uh, the slug, and it will have a faster I/O support because it have not um, emulated SCSI interface instead of USB drive, and a lot more of memory. Uh, so it's it can be an alternative to to using a, a slug if you are doing ARM development. Uh, MIPS support, so MIPS support 32 uh, and 64 bit mode uh, with various CPU, uh, including MIPS 32 and MIPS 64. Uh, it's even support very recent CPU, MIPS 64 R2, for people knowing that. Uh, the main problem is that I had very few machines are supported, so mainly the MIPS Malta and very old MIPS machine like the Pika 61 or the Magnum machines. That's means that if you really wanted to use it for Debian development, the only sane option is the Malta board, which had also a limitation to 256 megabytes of memory. Uh, it also has PCI and USB support, but uh, it has no really working uh, graphic card. So you have to be prepared to use uh, the serial port uh, to, or SSH to, to work on it. And the emulation is in user mode works, but not to the same level as our ARMEL or x 684 The poor PC targets, so uh, it supports also 32 and 64 bits. Um, the 64 uh, kernel doesn't, the 64 bit uh, emulation on the CPU side is not fully tested, and there is no real machine. Uh, emulated machine to test it. So the only usable machine is the uh, old G3 page uh, power PC, which runs in 32 bit mode. You can have up to 2 GB of emulated RAM, PCI, USB support. So there is a broken ID emulation, meaning that uh, currently QMU emulates another um, ID board uh, to be able to have a, a CD ROM support, uh, but it's still usable and the frame buffer emulation is also broken meaning the color are reversed and you are not really able to use X on it. So if you want to, to use it for development, be prepared to not have uh, X support, but otherwise the, the CPU uh, is working very correctly. Uh, and uh, another architecture we have in Debian is the Spark. Uh, the 32-bit emulation is uh, very n working very correctly. Uh, with uh, almost complete emulation of uh, Sun 4 m machines. There are only a few uh, small devices uh, that are not emulated, but it's almost complete. You can, depending on the machine, you can have up to 2 GB of RAM emulated. The only problem is that Debian doesn't support the 32-bit Spark uh, since Edge. Edge was the last release with this emulation. And the 64-bit emulation is not really working. Uh, it's it's still in development. There are people working on it currently, but it crashes af after uh, a few uh, lines of uh, kernel uh, print K. And the emulation user mode is also basic, so it's not really used and not compared to the level of the others. And we there are also the targets that we don't really have in Debian or they are currently integrated in Debian, so you can see the, the support. Uh, so um, uh, that, for example, we have SH4 supports. Uh, I know there is an SH port in development. Maybe uh, that can be useful. And also for S390, uh, there is um, 
some development on it and it seems to be quite fast except that it will be limited to the 64-bit uh, uh, emulation to 64-bit uh, uh, host support CPU so how I tested these targets okay how I tested a bit the targets I told you the emulation on the CPU is correct uh, I tried uh, to build uh, GDP, Binutils, and GCC uh, under QMU and under Real Machine, and then compared the binary that are produced, uh, all the resulting binaries, but also all the um, the build tree, comparing even config.log files, trying to see if they are different and if they are explainable or not, and on all those targets, uh, the, pr the previous one on the, the other targets. Uh, we have exactly the same results on um, the Debian side, on the virtual machine side, and the real machine side. So it's really something uh, that can be useful for debugging. I have debugged a lot of things with QMU, uh, problem tracker on the Debian build elements, and they were reproducible, uh, reproducible under uh, QMU, even for some strange uh, internal CPU uh, functions or. So it works very well for that, which doesn't mean uh, you can build your uh, packages on QMU and upload them to the archive. That's something which is not allowed in Debian. There have been some discussion about that. And uh, don't use it uh, to upload packages now. For KVM, it's different. I, s I don't know what is the uh, main opinion, but given, in my opinion, given that the, there is no emulation on the, on the instruction set, that the instructions are emulated directly, uh, at executed directly on the host CPU, I don't think there is a real problem to use KVM to, to build package. And also, we already have some KVM build demons uh, in the, uh, running in Debian. So it looks very cool, but now what you want is getting it working on your computer. So. <laughs> The first is probably to test uh, a, a very simple mode, which is the user emulation. So I will do that, actually. I plan to do a demo at the end, but I think for the QMU user emulation, the best is to do it now. So you can run directly... Uh, oops. You can run uh, a binary compiled for another architecture on the same OS using directly QMU, uh, the architecture, and the name of the binary. So that works, uh, but that works only for static binaries. If your binary are using uh, libraries, for dynamic uh, binaries, you have to, you need a root tree so of uh, this architecture, uh, including all the, the libraries, and you have to start with a prefix. So that's where the demo is maybe useful. So I'm doing that with the army, I don't know. Maybe I should increase the size of the... I don't know. Uh, ah, yeah, right. Uh, configuration... No, it's not that. Uh, model... Uh, okay. And I guess increasing the, s the font size. Are you able to see now? Or a bit more? Okay. Like that. So here I have an, uh, an RML tree. So I can run fine. You can see there are some binaries and some libraries, mainly the, the libc. So imagine I want to do a simple ls. I can run qmu arm. And if I try to run the ls, it won't work because it doesn't find the glibc. So that's a moment with minus L. You say where is your root directory on the, uh, so basically the prefix to add to all binaries. And now you are able to use the ls, and I can show you that it's an RML uh, binary. So it's ARM uh, LSB. You can even try to run, for example, bin sh. So it's very up to date, so it's used dash. <laughs> and you, you can see your tree and execute a, a few commands, a cat, and so on. I don't think there is a lot more to see uh, about, to know about that. The only maybe other useful option if you are doing debugging 
there is an S trace option, so you can see, like if you are using your uh, S trace, you can see all the syscalls that are uh, used. So that can be useful for for debugging. And then you just have to have some imagination about how to use it. Uh, what are the the use cases? So that's for the user emulation. I think it's very simple. And let's continue with the system emulation. So a few warning first. Yeah, uh, it's better to use a very recent version. So the the QMU development has stalled uh, a bit before version uh, 010. So uh, there, when KVM support has been added to QMU, uh, development started again, and so there is a huge difference between versions 09. Unfortunately, the version we have uh, in Lenny and the version 010 and later. Yes, the, the version 010 has been released a bit too late for any. So really prefer version 0.10 or even 0.11, I will see a few words later. So there is no GUI, so get ready to use the command line, or there are also a lot of front ends available. The goal of QMU is really to stay simple, and uh, if people really want a GUI uh, to configure the, uh, the emulation and so on, to use a front end for that, uh, there are many. And uh, sometimes you you uh, see some function that doesn't work, you, you, for example, network configuration, but remember there is no point running uh, QMU as root, even if it seems to work, this is the only way to work. Uh, QMU uh, is probably very secure, but still it's a complex software, so there might be a, a security issue somewhere, so if you run it as a user, you prevent this kind of thing. So if we want to start, you can just uh, run the QMU system in the name of the architecture. Be aware that for um, AMD64, it's the official name of the architecture, so x86-64. And what you want to run, for example, CD-ROM and run Debian Live. So it's something uh, I think I've prepared. Uh, so I can run Debian Live. It ju the, it's just a SH uh, script that is contained in the same lines, so you can uh, boot Debian Live. Uh, you can probably make it bigger. Well, oh, oh, oh what's that? <laughs> That's the official CD we have uh, released with Lenny. I probably there is a new version now. So just for the demonstration, I'm running it with uh, KVM enabled, so it's a bit faster, so you don't have to wait for for the whole boot. But oh. and then you have your it's the KD version. So well, maybe I'm not sure it works continuing up to the end of the boot, but. That's basically uh, how it works. But you want probably to do a bit more. Well, it has finished to boot actually. You can, you can use it as a full screen. Well, it hasn't finished to boot, so. Uh, let's continue. So the main interface, you have seen the interface. Uh, by default, it's a just X11 interface, which is actually SDL behind. Uh, you can use Control plus Alt to grab into the interface, so then you are sure all your keys and your mouse are sent to QMU and not to your host. You can switch to window mode to full screen mode uh, using Control plus Alt plus F and vice versa. Uh, so when you are using the grabbing mode, uh, your mouse stay inside your your uh, window. But it's sometimes you really want to be able to change from QMU to your host uh, directly. So for that, there is a, an option which is USB device tablet. So instead of emulating a mouse, it emulates a, a tablet. So it uses uh, absolute uh, coordinates. And so you can directly uh, uh, move your mouse into the QMU window and back to your host without doing anything. And another option that can be very useful is a no quit option. Uh, it's just to prevent uh, closing wi uh, QMU by mistake, doing a, a F4 or cl 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 um, 
clicking on the cross. So you will see that it's something that can happen when you are using it uh, very often and switching to other application. So that's the XC11 interface by default. There is also a Curse interface, which only works in, in text mode, but that can be very useful if you want to boot a system remotely, for example, through SSH. Uh, and also, if you want to run it uh, as, a, as a daemon somewhere on the machine, on the server, and access it from remote, including the graphic interface, it can um, uh, emulate a VNC server, so then you can connect to this server. And have in the last version, you can even uh, have multiple clients uh, simultaneous, simultaneously. And for that, you probably, if you are not using a US keyboard, probably have to uh, select your keyboard because as you are going through VNC, uh, QMU is sending the raw key codes to your guests. So exactly like a keyboard will send, and uh, QMU have to know how to translate the key received through VNC into raw key code of, of a keyboard. So, for example, to select the FR keyboard minus key FR. And you may also want to disable the graphic output, and you can use the no graphic output. Uh, so, as for the demo, and until now I've just run a CD-ROM of Debian Live, but you probably want to uh, install uh, Debian on it or another system and save the result. So for for dive uh, recently up till recently there was a HDA to select to um, syntax to select the first hard drive so it's a deprecated interface now we should use a drive file equal syntax because it uh, um, allow to uh, to pass a lot more arguments uh, so for example it's uh, you can select uh, if your uh, drive should be emulated as IDE or as SCSI you can also select um, the f file format you are using. By default, it auto detects the file format, but it can be a security issue. So if you are running that on a server, you should force uh, the, the f image format to the format which is really used in, in the image. And so that's uh, the point. There are uh, different image formats, so which stores the image of your hard drive, of your limited hard drive. So first of all, the raw image, which is just storing the, drive direct, the content of the hard drive directly, it can be very fast. If you emulate a 40 gigabyte hard drive, it takes 40 gigabyte. Uh, that's big, but at the same time, it's, it's fast. So there is also a two copy and write format, so the QCO format, uh, which uh, only stores uh, the really used um, uh, sectors on the hard drives. Uh, it's slower, slower, but uh, it's also very small. Uh, QCO was the old format, uh, which doesn't support a lot of uh, things except being copy and write, and it will be deprecated uh, probably soon with the next versions. There is because there is a QCO to formats which are support for transparent compression and encryption, but it was really broken in version previous to uh, out ten. Can see QMU is moving a lot uh, currently. Um, there were things broken, but now it starts to stabilize. And also, when there is a release, there is a stable branch, so there will uh, be more stable uh, versions. So the question in that case: How to get fast I/O? So uh, sometimes people are reporting bugs, saying it's, it's very slow on their drives. So first of all, try to use a kernel without the F-Sync bug because it can really affect QMU. Especially if you are running a browser like Icewizzle or Firefox at the same time, for that you have to use a 2630 uh, kernel or later. If you really want faster, you use a raw image and not on a file system, but directly onto a partition, so LVM or a partition on the disk. Uh, so you are removing one layer. And also there is an option uh, added recently, which control how the disk access are cached. So and there is a, a different option. Either there is no cache at all, cache in uh, read mode or in read write. So if you want the fastest I/O possible, you have to use cache equal write back, which means that all the data are not written on the may not be written on the disk uh, when your guest machine think it has been written. So if your host crash with a poor problem or whatever, 
you may have data corrections, but it's really the, the fastest mode and there is a huge difference between the different modes. And if you want to do some development, sometimes uh, you don't want to, you, you have a working image, you don't want to break it, you can use a minus snapshot. It only works with QCO and QCO2 images, um, but it doesn't store uh, the change on the hard drive. So if you restart it later, if you break everything and you restart it, it will be the same as previous. It's a very useful option in when developing. There is also something which is a bit uh, complicated in QMU. I think it's the most complicated part and where persons are having problems. Uh, so a virtual card is emulated in the guest. Uh, it can, there are uh, different card available, different models, and there are, um, uh, available, there are different cards, tens, 100 and gigabit uh, cards. And um, that it's only virtual cards, so uh, it's the theoretical speed and a 10 megabit uh, card can run fa can run faster than that on QMU. But uh, faster cards, not um, mainly gigabit cards, uh, tends to have network overloading features, so it helps to use those cards under QMU. It's it's faster. So that that's on the guest side. On the host side, you have to uh, connect your guest to the network. So the default mode is user mode networking, so it runs as a default user, you don't need to be root, and you use standard uh, uh, functions uh, from the libc to connect to, to the network uh, using the sleep IP stack. Uh, it only supports TCP and UDP, not I ICMP because you need to be root for that. And it only supports IPv4, so it's the speed is reasonable and it's very easy to set up. So that's how it's done. So um, you, your guest is there and is seeing a virtual router with a virtual DHCP server, a virtual DNS server, and a virtual Samba server if enabled. And um, your it's connected to to your network with GPT function just as a user. Uh, if you want, uh, that's the default subnet is in 10 something, so if you are at DEPCONF, for example, it will collide with the current network. You can change it within using this option. And if you want to access to your QME image from the outside, you can redirect some ports of your host to your guest. I will show you a demo later about that. The other option are TAP networking. Uh, that's creating a TAP interface under Linux. Uh, which is connected to virtual NIC, so it's difficult to set up because you also have a lot of configuration on the outside. On the outside, uh, but it provides a full emulated IP stack with IPv6, whatever uh, you want on it, and very high transfer rate. Uh, but uh, it's complicated to set up. The alternative is VDA networking, uh, virtual distributed Ethernet. So it's uh, basically the same feature. It's very easy to set up on the QMU side. You are just moving the configuration on the VDA side, but it can be shared by different software. And also sometimes you don't just want to disable the networking, so you, there is an option for that uh, to make sure your host doesn't access to the network. A few other tips that can be very useful. Uh, you can boot directly a kernel uh, by using the kernel, uh, kernel initially and happen arguments, so you don't need a bootloader, it can boot faster, it's very useful in kernel development. You can change your machine or the CPU with some uh, options. You can uh, export a USB device, that is for example uh, you have a USB pen drive, you want to uh, have it available in your guest, so you can use USB device option and it is seen directly in the guest. Uh, there is uh, SMP support, so you can emulate multiple CPU. Uh, so if you are using QMU, it's only use one, without virtualization, you only use one CPU host. So if you emulate 64 CPU, it will be very f slow at the end, but it boots. If you want to enable KVM support via virtualization, uh, you just have to pass minus enable KVM. And uh, on Debian, if you are a member of the group KVM, uh, that's enough to, to get access to virtualization also on different distribution, I don't know what it's done, but I guess it's the same. And uh, if uh, you have a, a QMU image and you want to access it without botting QMU, there is a QMU NBD uh, tool. You can connect to a network block device and you, have you can mount, uh, so 
With this option, for example, disk image is then available on the host as slash dev nbd0, 0, 0p1, p2, p3, p4 for the partitions, and you can mount them and access them directly, even if you are using a QCO2 or compressed support, uh, it works. So I told you before there is a new version that will be available soon, which is planned for September. The main things in it is the KVM integration, so the virtualization really works with it. In QMU 0.10 it is there, but it's clearly slower than the uh, KVM software. Uh, there is a huge improvement of the QMU side, so you can run more binaries, they are more Cisco emulated. The QCO2 image support has been uh, really improved and really it is really stable because it will be the really the default image support in this version. There are new architecture that has been added and small uh, features, a lot of small uh, features have been added, bug fixed and speed improvement also. So I guess, well, one thing. <laughs> Uh, in Debian, the, we are basically two, Riku VoIP and me maintaining QMU. Uh, as we are both developing on the upstream side, we don't really use the QMU package. So we are really are work, looking for commenters to help us. So if there are some people wanting to help, you're welcome. And so there are a few links you can see on my presentation about how to... So I've prepared not a pre-built image for most uh, uh, Debian uh, architecture, so if you don't really n need to install them yourself, uh, you can just grab them and uh, and run them. And if you prefer to install them from from scratch, you have the installation instruction on my website. So now I will do uh, some demonstration like uh, I've did, but with most different architectures. And I'm also open to question if you have some, especially given. It may take time to boot, so... Okay, so that's live demo. I will close that. So I've prepared a few uh, demonstrations. So for example, we can boot a, an army uh, machine. So you can see the boot running. And so that's a bit slow, but still uh, the boot is quite fast and it will... Uh, run XORG later, so I let it booting and during this time I'm starting another machine. So I told you on, on the MIP simulation, for example, you don't have a graphic card, so if you run it, it's just uh, connected to a serial, uh, to the serial port, but it's still uh, usable. So you can see it booting also, we'll connect to it later. Uh, I And I will start also a few other images, and while they boot, I will take some questions if there are some. Yeah? Sorry? Uh, I will put it, currently it is not there, but I will put it on my website uh, after, and after fixing the few typo I've remarked during the talk, so. <laughs> yes, uh, I've tried to uh, use the MTD block stuff with QEMU. Yeah. Uh, and haven't succeeded. So how do you actually do that? Because there's something that the board actually, that you're emulating actually has to have MTD on it uh, in order to be able to on emulate. The, the, the image I am providing, there is n there do not use MTD supports because you can basically use um, the kernel and enter the option directly. So you can just start your kernel this way. Uh, there is MTD supports. F4 ARM, for example, uh, and SH4, so it has been added. Uh, I haven't really tried it, uh, to be honest, but I know there have been a lot of development on that uh, for the version 0.11, so I don't know if you have tried this version or not, but clearly uh, things probably have improved on that. So let's see if there are... Okay, so the images are still booting, so there is a Spark machine. There are, uh, I think that's the poor PC machine. So, what, you mentioned that uh, the latest version has got integration with KVM. Why? Um, I mean, I had had a little go when I was trying to test a DVD, but why would I want to use that integration rather than using KVM directly? You know, what what are the relative merits of the two, and what is the Okay, so KVM currently is mostly uh, used at the development branch. 
So uh, for each new version, there is a lot of new features, but also a lot of new bugs. So currently, with version 10, it's not really a good idea to use uh, the KVM emulation, KVM support on it. But with version 0.11, clearly, it's, it will, there will be a stable branch with uh, bug fixes, so the, the KVM support will be very more stable than, than the KVM software itself. So it's, it's just that KVM is currently, you're saying that KVM is unstable and QMU, um, QMU is, take, is... Yeah, it's taking the stable part of, the working okay. part of KVM, yeah. So that's our ARM machine starting currently X. Well, maybe my CPU is a bit... Uh, Starting, I have only dual, a dual core one and starting from machine at the same time. Maybe not a very good idea. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, I will take, I have a white one. Yeah. Oops. Okay, so uh, what I've done, so I will show you. Oops. Oh, it's cool. For the Debian. Uh, no demo. For the poor PC um, machine, I've specified a radial parameters, which uh, means now my uh, port uh, tw 2222 of my machine is connected to the 22 port inside the poor PC machine. So if you don't really want to use the, okay, I don't remember which one is it. Uh, the poor PC machine is this one. So it's possible to log in there, but you still have a console and s with QM interface, it's probably not very nice, you don't have cut and paste and so on. So this way, you can connect directly to the machine without having a complex uh, support. Uh, it should not work because... And now, you are on the poor PC machine. So, okay, so you can run it's still booting, I think, so that's why it's a bit slow. But you can see it's a, it's a G3 CPU. Uh, it's a Lenny kernel, the default kernel. So you can really do poor PC development this way. Uh, the same, so Spark is the only problem, it's still an edge version. But there is a Spark machine uh, booting. Logging out root, for example. I can show you. It's a... Your like a real Spark machine with the same uh, kind of CPU, uh, and then, for example, let's try to log in on the RML machine. So we are starting. So it's a bit slow because we are emulating, but it's a work GNOME environment. So, but you will see it's even possible to run OpenOffice in, in, in it, and it it works. And so for this machine, I started with USB tablet, so you can see that my mouse, or maybe it's there, on the, on the left side, I can enter directly to the, to, the host, to the virtual machine without having to grab and, uh, and so on and just follow. So that's the nice uh, feature of the USB tablet uh, option, something really you want to use. Well, it's really slow. Any other question, maybe? Uh, you say that uh, in order for mm, to have better I/O mm, performance, uh, it would be better to use a kernel uh, which is currently only in unstable. Yeah. Uh, is that kernel available in backports, and does it work uh, on backports as well as it does on unstable? If it mm, QMU is well backport at all. <laughs> uh, no, QMU, I don't think it is backported. I don't have the answer for the kernel. What I know is that I am using directly the unstable kernel. Uh, on a stable machine, it works. I mean, you can install it directly with the package. So it's not directly related to QMU. It's just that uh, it's also, it will really improve the uh, the, net the um, IO speed on the wor your wall machine, but it's really something important for QMU, especially that uh, given of this bug, your host machine can uh, be stuck for a few seconds. 
all the disk access for a few seconds. And in QMU, if your uh, emulate the kernel of your emulated machine doesn't get uh, news from the uh, ID or SCSI drive for uh, a few seconds, it starts to to sometimes mount it uh, again at read only or uh, stuff like that. So it's really a good idea to not have this bug. And it will improve, for example, if you are using Firefox or IceWizard, it will also improve uh, a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to use QMU, like right now, but uh, like later Git, uh, the latest in the Git repository, then do you think I can build it with the Debian, so from the Debian source package, put the latest Git in there and build the package? You, yeah. you mean taking the QMU? You the pa the, the packaging. You're taking the packaging stuff from Debian source, uh, and put it into the Git and... Currently not, but the plan is to package the new version in experimental soon. I mean the 0.11. So, well, there might be some differences because in upstream, for QMU to work, the virtual machines need to have BIOS or op open firmware or stuff like that. So uh, on the upstream side, they are provided directly as binaries. There are the sources, but they are provided as binaries, and they are not rebuilt uh, at all. In the De on the Debian side, uh, we rely on external packages for that. So that's probably the the main difference that uh, you may encounter. It may if you package the upstream uh, Git repository with the Debian directory you will probably end up with the um, firmware in the Debian package and may conflict with the uh, official package we have for these firmwares. Any other question? No? Okay, stop. Okay, so if you have more questions, you can come after.